In this video, we are going to be looking at the topic of fermentation. Let's get right to it. Fermentation is the incomplete breakdown of glucose. This is one of the parts of cellular respiration. And the point of this is to release energy. So fermentation is the breakdown of glucose, but when there is limited or no oxygen. When there is a limited or insufficient supply of oxygen, then fermentation is chosen over aerobic respiration. This is usually the case. However, there are some organisms that only undergo fermentation. And then the first stage of fermentation is the same pathway as aerobic respiration, which is glycolysis. Glycolysis is the breakdown of glucose into pyruvate, another molecule called pyruvate. And then the pyruvate that is produced from glycolysis can then undergo one of two types of fermentation. We are only going to look at the two types in this video. That is the fermentation of uh, alcohol fermentation, production of alcohol, and lactic acid fermentation, fermentation which produces lactic acid. And so there are two types of fermentation here, alcohol and lactic acid fermentation. This is the word equation for alcohol fermentation. In alcohol fermentation, ethanol is produced, which is the alcohol. And then we have carbon dioxide and energy. The energy produced here is 210 kilojoules as compared to the energy produced by aerobic respiration, which is 2,898 kilojoules. So you can see why usually the aerobic respiration is the one that is preferred because it releases much more energy compared to alcohol fermentation. And then in lactic acid fermentation, we only have one product that is lactic acid. And the energy produced here is even less, only 150 kilojoules. The examples of these two respirations, alcohol respiration is done by yeast and by paddy plants, whereas lactic acid fermentation is done by lactobacillus, the genus of bacteria, and by human muscle cells as well. We'll look at each one. First, let's look at the alcohol fermentation by yeast. It is used in the making of bread because, as we know, this process produces carbon dioxide. So I'm sure we're all familiar with the addition of yeast in making bread. And how does that help? It actually causes the bread to rise. This is because the carbon dioxide that is released during the fermentation process will then expand within the dough and cause the dough to rise. This is why when the dough is baked and we have bread and we slice into the bread, we have pockets of gases. And then it is also used in the production of alcoholic beverages because this process produces ethanol, which is an alcohol. And so it is used in the production of wine and beer. Let's look at lactic acid fermentation by lactobacillus. Here it is used in the production of yogurt. This bacteria actually breaks down the lactose in milk into lactic acid. And this is the source of the sourness in yogurt because acidic substances have a sour taste. This lactic acid then goes on to coagulate casein, which is a milk protein. And then finally yogurt is produced. Now let's go to the alcohol fermentation by paddy plants. So again, this fermentation process is usually the choice when there is limited or no oxygen. Again, there are some exceptions where some organisms are obligate anaerobes, where they can only survive by anaerobic respiration. Anaerobic respiration meaning respiration in conditions with uh, limited or no oxygen supply. But for paddy plants, they are not obligate anaerobes they actually undergo aerobic respiration. However, if you have seen a paddy field, you can even Google it, Google paddy field, and you will see that it is basically drowning in water. So the whole, the, the significant part of the paddy plant is submerged in water at the bottom. And so paddy plants exist in waterlogged areas. The region where they are submerged in water actually has a low concentration of oxygen. There's a limited supply of oxygen. And so therefore the plants are forced to undergo anaerobic respiration in the form of fermentation, alcohol fermentation. So what's going to happen here is the paddy plants are going to carry out alcohol fermentation. And so ethanol is produced in these paddy plants. 
In normal plants, this alcohol that is produced is actually toxic and it will kill the plant. However, paddy plants are special because they produce alcohol dehydrogenase in large quantities. Alcohol dehydrogenase actually breaks down the alcohol into harmless carbon dioxide. In fact, carbon dioxide can even be useful to the plant in the process of photosynthesis. And therefore, paddy plants have a much higher tolerance for ethanol and is able to carry out alcohol fermentation to sustain itself under the conditions, the waterlogged conditions. Let's look at lactic acid fermentation in human cells. The condition where we have a lack of oxygen or a limited supply of oxygen is usually during vigorous activity, whatever that activity may be. It could be a sprint and during vigorous activity, rate of oxygen used by the muscle cells because every time muscle contracts, we need to use oxygen to generate the energy for that contraction in aerobic respiration. And so once the rate of oxygen being used up cannot be supported by the rate of oxygen supplied by the circulatory system, it cannot be supported by the blood circulatory system. The blood cannot supply enough nutrients and oxygen to the muscle cells in order to carry out that high rate of energy being produced and oxygen being used up, then this creates a condition where there is a lack of oxygen. The muscle cells are said to be in an oxygen deficiency state and they are said to undergo oxygen debt. So now the conditions are not enough oxygen. Therefore, the cell will resort to anaerobic respiration in the form of lactic acid fermentation. So lactic acid fermentation, glucose again is only partially oxidized to lactic acid as we saw in the word equation earlier and the accumulation of this lactic acid in the muscles is what causes muscle cramps and muscle fatigue. And so if you notice, if, if you go for a sprint during the whole time, let's look at the graph here. So this is a diagram, this is a graph that shows oxygen intake and the activity, the time in terms of the activity. And so at the start of the activity, let's call this the exercise. So this is the exercise period. At the start of the exercise, the demand for oxygen is represented by this region here, pink region here. So the demand for oxygen shoots up to this level. However, our body cannot instantly take in that amount of carbon dioxide. So what's going to happen is it's going to, it's going to rise slowly. But this amount of oxygen is needed all the time, which is not supplied by the blood circulatory system. The oxygen intake is only this part. Only this part is supplied. So this area here is what is represented by the oxygen debt. And then after uh, exercising, let's say complete a sprint, 100 meter sprint, you will realize that at the end of it, we will start panting, gasping for air our breathing rate increases and our breathing depth increases as well. We'll be taking deep breaths at a very high rate. This is called the recovery period. And why does this happen? So at the end of the exercise, at the end of the vigorous activity, excess oxygen is taken in. We are breathing in excess oxygen. For what purpose? To completely oxidize the lactic acid that was formed earlier, that is within the muscles. So we want to completely oxidize the lactic acid to carbon dioxide, water and energy. That is why even post-exercise, post-exercise is when we are breathing really heavily and really hard. Even though the activity is not being carried out anymore and energy is not required at that particular moment. We still need to completely oxidize and remove the lactic acid. And when all the lactic acid is removed, we say that oxygen debt is prepaid. And so when we look at this graph, you will see that after exercise, in the recovery period, the oxygen intake slowly goes down. It doesn't drop immediately. It slowly, gradually declines. This is the normal rate, by the way, as you and I are breathing right now. That's the normal rate. It shoots up during exercise and then uh, it gradually goes up rather and then it gradually comes down. So this is where we say this region represents the oxygen debt being repaid. And you can see the area in these two regions are the same, representing the same amount of oxygen that is 
needed and then supplied later on. That's it for this video guys. I really hope that you've learned something. If you have, please do me a favor and hit that like button. Really does help. Thank you very much for doing that. Do share this with your friends if you think it's useful. I'll be producing at least once a week, uh, videos at least once a week. And I hope to see you guys in the next one.